near where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. And it talks about the same exact information that is in the secret, that, that, uh, that your thoughts are based on logic and the logic, and you can go through the, you, what, where you place your attention and your intention, and your intention has three basic patterns of what happens with your mind, your heart, and your body. And if you engage all these things together at one time, yeah, you're going to get exactly what your intention is. But what the creators of The Secret don't understand is, is the instrument that the creation is being done through is the mind. It's the brain. And the brain is a polarized tool. You've got the left brain and the right brain. And then the left and right is the front lobes and the back lobes. And it keeps going through what I believe is 64 different divisions. Uh, the same 64 divisions of the 64 codons that are in the human DNA. And, uh, and, and so it is possible to bring to you what you want or what you intend through your intentions. But what you will also get is the exact equal and opposite force coming from behind you where you can't see. Our eyes see this way, but we can't see this way. And so you get what you want coming this way, and you're going to get exactly what you don't want coming from behind. And so, uh, and there is now a man named uh, Dr. James Hart out of California, one of the brain uh, experts in the world. He's considered the two, one of the two um, greatest brain experts on the planet ever to live. And he agrees with me that they've found scientifically that you can go in using the brain and you can create anything, but you always get this yeah, other thing, the opposite. Com the opposite thing also. So what's going on in the world is you've got six and a half billion people in the world and most of them want peace. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're praying together, the, these huge circles of people praying for world peace, but they're never going to get world peace as long as they pray from the brain. They're, all, they're going to get a world that's half peace and half war. And it's just going to keep generating that half peace, half war, until uh, they learn to create in a different way. There is another way that the indigenous people tell us all over the world and that the ancient people, the ancient Tibetan Buddhists and the other ones talk about, that you can create, which is creating from where the, where the original stars and planets were created, which is in the heart. If you leave the brain throw it away, get out of there, and go down into the heart, you can do the same thing. You can create there. You can bring anything you want. You can change the world. But you won't get the opposite effect. On another way to explain this is that we have two heart chakras, one here right above the sternum, one distance between the tip of your nose and your chin, above that, which is about, uh, averages at 7.23 centimeters. Two heart chakras. The lower one is connected directly to the heart. The upper heart chakra is connected to the right brain. We have a, uh, an emotional body that we're all familiar with. You know, we feel love, we feel hate, we feel joy, we feel sadness. We, we can feel all these things, but all that emotional body is coming from our right brain. And, uh, and which is connected to this upper heart chakra. If we were to connect, we have, what we don't know, most people don't know, is that we have another emotional body, and that's connected through the heart. And, but that emotional body has no polarity to it. And so there is the only place that you can experience what everybody's talking about of unconditional love. In that spot, you can actually have unconditional love and experience it. But from the brain, which is where most people get married, they fall in love from the brain, they see them, they're beautiful, they want them, they marry them. But that, that kind of relationship, they'll be there and they'll be talking how much they love each other, I love you, I love you, I love you, and then one will say something that hurts the other person's ego, and just like that, they hate them. And, they, and they'll start screaming at them, they'll say the wrong thing. That's brain love. <laughs> and, but there is a love down here that no matter what you said or what you did, you could kill somebody, but if they love you, they wouldn't change loving you. That's hardly ever been experienced. Women get that experience usually for a short time. They have a baby. The baby comes up. It's on the breast. They're looking down. And now they're loving that person from their heart, not their brain. 
And that son, they would die for that, per, for that baby. They would die. They would give up their life in a moment. That's unconditional love. But we don't know we have that. Now, the same way, we have two dream bodies. We have a dream body that comes from, the bra- from, from our brain, but our dream, and that's what we do at night. We close our eyes. We go into darkness. We go down into uh, uh, what seems similar to going into the heart, and we dream. But the dreams are polarized. We can have good dreams. We can have bad dreams <laughs> because the dreaming, the part that's doing that is a polarized instrument. Uh, there is another way where you can go, leave your heart and go down and uh, leave your brain and go down into your heart, and you can begin to dream there. You'll never see a negative dream. The heart only dreams things that are positive for for all life everywhere. It never. Uh, it just won't. It just doesn't. It won't do it. It's not a polarized situation. We can create from the brain, but we'll get a polarized creation pattern when we do it. We can leave our brain and go into our heart, and uh, and we can create from there, and then we get exactly what the intention is. 